Just, just make yourself a home. Okay, so you're in a bit of local bands. You're still are you still doing uh, motor skills? Yeah, I do motor skills. Um, that's kind of uh, Chris, who's in motor skills. He he and Andy, who they're both in Old Bricks. I'm not in Old Bricks anymore. They do the music, and I come on and kind of like get to add my little element to it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's um it's nice to be it's nice to be just coming on top of what they do and kind of adding my little bit instead of having to, you know, it's electronic, so it's a whole different kind of yeah. vibe, so it's fun to experiment with that. Yeah, so when you're songwriting, it's strictly Gross Ghost? Um, you, so, yeah, I mean, Gross Ghost songs can be, like, me, or some of them are Trey, comes up with a song, then brings it to me, but it's always one of me or Trey writing a song and then bringing it to each other and then bringing it to the band. Now that we have a band, though, a full a full-time band, I guess we're going to start writing songs as a band together and uh, in the practice space, which is kind of what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But yeah, with motor skills, I get to to do lyrics and uh, think of cool guitar parts, but I don't have to think of like the bass part or the drum beat or, you know, stretch myself. Yeah, working thing. out the whole structure of it all. Yeah, so it's cool. cool. So how did how did you find the rest of the musicians? How did you guys all come um, together? TJ came on. Uh, we were we just, we like skateboarding and... and I've liked his style as a person and a drummer for a while, so we would just talk about music and I gave him a copy of some recordings and was hoping that he'd want to join the band and then I kind of asked him and he kind of said he wanted to at the same time, so it worked out good. And then uh, and then Rob uh, DePatri, he's in Wild Wild Geese and we played a bunch of shows with them and we were going through different versions of the band and he's a killer guitar player, he's a great guitar player and a really good friend, so he wanted to be in it, and that kind of rounded it out. And how, how about you and Trey? Um, Trey and me have been friends for like about six or seven years, and he, when he was younger, he, like he's a few years younger than me, and he would be recording stuff and showing it to me, and, and, I, and I could picture his recording style with the songs I had in my head, so that kind of was how it started, and then 
he showed me some songs he was working on and we figured out that it had a similar vein, like aesthetic, so we kind of melded them together. So is this the first project you guys have worked on together? Uh, Gross Ghost, like, was a bunch of, we had a few different, we were always doing it together, what it became, but we had different names, but they only lasted for like two weeks. we go on tour and I have a name and it became this, so yeah. that was cool. But yeah, he's really, he's, Trey's really uh, unassumingly brilliant, you know? He's a secret, secret production recording master, and it's nice to have that because I'm retarded when it comes to that stuff. So, um, when did you guys start working on the full length? Uh, just sporadically on and off for the past year. Um, we did, we did some home recordings when we lived together, and we record in this little tiny room in the back of our house and. Some of those songs made the cut. We just took them to Nick Peterson, who runs Track and Field, and he would spruce them up and like kind of EQ them. And then we liked him so much that we went into his studio and finished out the remainder of the record with him, uh, just because he has better gear and more knowledge of how to get sounds that we want. So yeah. it was like kind of collage throughout the year, and then we just compiled them onto one track. It's the records half stuff we'd already put out, just like remastered and then the other stuff is new songs cool yeah. so how far along is the process i saw you guys just finished album artwork yeah that? we've um we finished the album artwork uh we got a uh, north carolina artist kelsey melville to do that and it's really cool and it plays on the album title which is Brer rabbit which is like this uh old southern tale about a rabbit that's always getting in trouble and getting his way out of situations and kind of fits i think yeah. where we're at in our lives so so yeah so the artwork just got done and, and actually today it's getting like put together and we're going to send the record off this month and awesome. get it back hopefully be ready to tour and do stuff by february cool so is that what release you're looking at february ish yeah february just a safe bet it could come back from the from the place like in a month and we could have it but i feel like to do what we're going to do we need to have time to plan it out and stuff and and the season, the month of love. Yeah. So <laughs> spread that love. <laughs> It'd be cool to go out and tour and stuff. We don't, we don't really haven't gotten to play out of state that much, so we're looking forward to doing that. Yeah, do you have a favorite local venue around here? It's too many to name, and I don't want to be in doghouse with any. <laughs> um, they're all great for different reasons. Cat's Cradle. I mean, when you play there, it feels really special because it means like you kind of a rite of passage. And then 506 just is a great sounding room. And the nightlight is kind of like a, an extension of your practice space. You're hanging out with your friends. And Kings is a good excuse to go to Raleigh. And uh, Slims is fun too, you know. They get you, get you all nice and liquored up and then send you out there to play. So it's fun. Have you guys had a favorite show yet? Uh, the show we all, uh, TJ's I've first show. I've only done one show. Yeah, he's only done one show. Um, it was at the cradle. But it was at the cradle, and it was for the OCSC 10-year anniversary, so that's that was pretty awesome. And that felt really great to play with, like Crooked Fingers and Crip Locky, and it was just nice to be involved. And it's the first time Gross Ghost ever played the cradle, so that was, that was kind of a high. Yeah, so that's an awesome, awesome yeah, was, affirming yeah, moment. Yeah, it was, it was like, TJ, do you want to join the band? we got a show at the cradle. Like, <laughs> but he's, he's a pro. <laughs> so... Yeah. What's it like uh, being in the Triangle music scene, like with that tightly knit community? Like how? It's nice. Um, it it's nice to work outside of it, like work in your own brain and do your own thing, and then kind of when you're ready to to show showcase new songs or or get a gig, you know that your friends are in bands, they'll be playing, or that uh, you know the people you go to see shows all the time. So it's just a really nice rapport between bands and club owners and um it's nice that it's like five blocks away from where you live loading's easy yeah but also the bands around here right now there's really great music that i would like even if i didn't live in the states so that's really cool do you have favorite upcoming local artists i mean the same as everybody else i mean <coughs> tj do you want to take this one sperm count <laughs> <laughs> sperm count's a hardcore band that i play in yeah, uh, whatever brains, um, you know, double negatives. double negatives, good, and 
whatever I already said them. Last year's man. <laughs> Last year's man. Spider bags are one of my favorites. Um, yeah, there's too many to name, but that's just a, it's just a couple. <laughs>